Our next speaker is a little bit different. We'll still, so far, we've seen ed educational, government, and commercial institutions. Our next speaker is a commercial member. But this is also an actual medical doctor. He works in the emergency room up in Silicon Valley and is probably the only Silicon Valley presenter here today. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? Okay, I'm going to go through the uh, little slideshow real quick and then get to the demos. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, why we need a 3D standard for uh, medical imaging and now we have uh, propelled X3D much to be probably the prime candidate for that standard. So why 3D? Well, two examples of a hospital coming near you right now. First of all, one in three people here are going to have cardiovascular disease. And a lot of those people are going to need to get what's called a uh, catheterization to look at the if there's blockages in their uh, coronary arteries. Well, this, the uh, procedure up until now has been uh, having it's sort of an elaborate procedure where you get a large, um, a, a large needle stuck into your groin and then they thread a, and snake up a tube into your uh, heart and then take a bunch of pictures there. That's going to all change now with what's called a cardiac CT angiogram. It's already happening, but uh, Toshiba just came out with a machine which uh, decreases the radiation level significantly. Um, it's the number one cardiovascular disease, number one killer in this country, and this this uh, uh, procedure exposes the patient to less radiation now. Thirty percent of the, these these invasive procedures are negative, which means that there are candidates for this type of uh, procedure. And you get uh, and the reason I'm talking about this is it's 3D. Essentially, what you do is you get a CT scan, and the radiologist or cardiologist can flow through, uh, travel through your coronary arteries, and, and look to see what what if they're blocked or not without having to do that invasive procedure. The uh, number two reason uh, that's coming near you is everyone in this room will have to have a colonos excuse me, colonoscopy after uh, age 50 to screen for colon cancer. Um, this is what a colonoscopy looks like where they actually put a camera and up your behind and thread up to, to you know, the mid part of your, your abdomen here. And this is what your colon looks like on 3D. Um, as you can see, it's pretty similar. And this, again, is also using a CT scanner and some contrast. And you don't have to have the thing up your behind. So why do we need a standard? Well, we need to share data. For example, if you go to hospital A and then you decide uh, you have procedures done and then you switch hospitals, you move, don't you want them to be able to read your data? Well, if it's in 3D and they've marked it up, they can't read it because hospital A has one software and hospital B has another. We need a standard for 3D. Number two is for diagnosis, also for training. So if we want to take a, a really interesting case to show our future doctors and tell them this is what an abnormal looks like, well, we need to be able to pass this around and have all the markings, et cetera. Well, if they're all using different software, no one's going to be able to pass all those important messages around. The other thing, I'm sorry, open office doesn't work too well with uh, PowerPoint. And the other thing is data archiving. Um, you name one standard, one 3D standard, and you, Tony Parisi has blogged on this before, that's, that's lasted the test of time besides X3D. All of them have gone by the wayside. Why X3D? It's ISO ratified, which makes us keep backward compatibility important, and that's what keeps us our longevity, and, and we do things on a consensus basis. It's an open standard. Anyone can use it. And it's also royalty free. It's interoperable, as we talked about. Uh, there's real-time interactivity. Can you open that up? Um, which you won't get with other standards. Uh, and they, you can do annotation, as we talked about, the markups. And um, it also has a compressed format, which uh, was just talked about previously. So now I'm going to do the demo. Six. OK. Can you see that? Um, so what we have here is we have the uh, Web3D Consortium has, uh, through a contract with the, the Telemedicine Advanced uh, Technology Research Center, which is a division of the Army Material Command, uh, has uh, was able on the, on the left here to develop a browser with the help of actually several of the vendors here. Um, and um, then on the right, uh, fortuitously, uh, Johan Burr and Ivan Young, who actually helped me a lot, out a lot for this presentation too, had developed their own browser and implemented a uh, an extension, a draft extension, which is still a draft. So we already have two implementations, and I'll show you how close they are to each other in terms of uh, what, what, what things look like. How many want to time? Three minutes left. Yes. Okay. So you can't see that too well, huh? Um, this is a 
I, I'm going to get another one. Uh, sorry. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is a raw file, so we have to... Uh-oh. I got, I got the wrong thing, so here. 6124, sorry. I'm trying to rush here. All right. I'm going to open the same file in this browser, too. <coughs> it's got a transfer function. So you can see... We're doing volume rendering. This is these are uh, we're using the a uh, volume rendering um, spec, and if I uh, I can change things around, I can make it. You can see different things here, and if I put the same transfer function that this one has, it looks very much the same. As you can see, if I bring this forward here. So that's have a brain, and you can see the, peop the eyeballs, etc. So it looks pretty cool. And as you can see, they're very much similar. That's two separate implementations. Now I'm going to show you on the left here, we can actually open a bunch of DICOM files. So these are files that come directly from your hardware, the raw files that come right from any CT scanner, MRI scanner, PET scanner, any uh, uh, DTI, functional MRI. And I'm gonna just going to open one real quickly here. So this is actually me. Whoa. There you go. There I am. So you can see we just open up a whole DICOM stack. It automatically stacks all the images right from the earth. So you could pull this, take this from one of your studies and drop it right into this, into uh, the MedX 3D browser. Now on, on this side, um, it's time. Man. It's time. I want to show you, th this can actually run real X3D and I'll show you why the X3D becomes important now. Give me one more now. Oh, sorry. Right here, we just have that, remember the dolphin that Don showed? Well, there it is, um, floating around with this uh, CT scan of a chest. So you couldn't do that with any other, there's a lot of volume rendering software that's free on the web, uh, but it can add things like this. Now, I'm, we added a, a dolphin, but you know, you can add anything. And one more thing. and. I'm done. I, it, it does run on. The, I could show you. It can run in uh, uh, Firefox, and we can actually run it within the browser as a plugin too. That's it.